Well look who decided to click on this video, you with all your complex systems working in perfect harmony to keep you existing, you with your lineage of millions of successful ancestors out there in nature. It really is astounding that you're here at all, honestly. So let's celebrate a little bit and look at some more bodily musings to learn all about the weird stuff that goes on in the human body on this episode of Stuff You've Probably Wondered. Just like the last bodily musings video, I'm going to go over three questions and answer them as best I can. Starting off, what causes a hangover? I mean, obviously it's alcohol, more specifically the chemical ethanol, that leads to the extremely unpleasant symptoms of dizziness, nausea, headaches, fatigue, and dry mouth. But what exactly is it about that keg stand you did last night that led to you not wanting to open the refrigerator because it's too bright? Interestingly, it's not very well known what makes hangovers happen, but doctors and scientists have a couple ideas. First is that when you consume ethanol, the chemicals are broken down by your liver into more manageable ones. One of these chemicals is acetaldehyde, which is 10 to 30 times more toxic than ethanol itself, and it stays in the body for longer, which could explain all those nasty symptoms. Another possible explanation is that when you drink, the body's immune system goes up on high alert, so a protein called cytokine is produced. Cytokine is the thing that wakes up your white blood cells into action, but for some reason cytokine really knocks those cells around when alcohol is involved, leading to nausea and fatigue. Finally, there is the existence of congeners, which form in dark liquors like whiskey, wine, and tequila during fermentation. It's what causes their distinct flavor and color. And studies have shown that people are much more likely to gain a hangover from dark alcohol than clear. And one other thing. There are actually no confirmed cures for hangovers, so that rumor that eating a whole lemon followed by a spoonful of baking soda gets rid of symptoms is probably not true. Moving on to something a little harder to explain are birthmarks. Why do we have them? Unfortunately, there is very little understanding on the subject because although nearly everyone has at least one and they consistently show up at the same time, within the first month of life, birthmarks are totally harmless outside of a few cases involving skin cancer. However, one potential reason for their existence is that because a fetus grows very rapidly in a relatively short period of time, and cells are all over the place becoming skin and bones and brains, certain parts become discolored as they develop. There are a couple different kinds of birthmarks. Moles, which are raised discolored bumps usually on the face. Café à lait, which are big oval-shaped birthmarks. Mongolian spots, which are bluish blemishes that appear on people with darker skin and eventually fade with time, and vascular birthmarks, which are the discoloration of the blood vessels just under the skin's surface and are usually red or purple. Of course, folklore attempted to explain these strange spots, the most hilarious being from Italian and Arabic culture, where birthmarks are supposed to be the failed hopes and dreams of a mother instilled onto her baby after giving birth. Our last stop on the bodily musings train has to do with the ear. Why is it shaped the way it is? Well, let's get a small misnomer out of the way first. This whole monstrosity in your head is technically your ear, and the weird fleshy thing on the side of your head is just part of it, called the pinna. The interesting thing about the ear is how perfectly it's built to help you receive sound. Sound waves enter your ear, brush against the tiny hairs in the ear canal, bounce off your eardrum, vibrate three tiny bones, and zip up the cochlea where they transform into electrical signals to help your brain understand what you just heard. And if these organs are the heating and plumbing of the ear, the pinna is the feng shui. Its many folds and points are there specifically to funnel sound in and cut out unnecessary background noise, especially super high and low noise, which basically just bounces back. The pinna makes sure that human voices take precedence over pretty much everything you hear and amplifies it, which is probably why it's so easy to eavesdrop on juicy conversations. Finally, the pinna helps localize sound, in other words, to help you know where it's coming from. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer, or have an original song you'd like me to put in the background of a future video, leave it in the comments or email me at stuffyouveprobablywondered at gmail.com. Also in the comments, tell me, which of these three bodily musings do you think is more surprising? Can you think of other reasons why they might work the way they do? Either way, I'll see you next time on Stuff You've Probably Wondered.